I'm Miss Sarah, and this is At Home Makerspace, where every week I show you how to make fun projects with things you can find at home. This week we are launching our Learning to Sew series. This will be a series of videos that teach you projects that you can try to learn how to sew. This week we're starting with a pre-sewing project called Lacing Cards. Lacing cards are a great project for learning sewing skills like how to thread a needle and how to make some basic stitches. It's also a really great way to build up your fine motor skills, which is a fancy way of saying it helps your hand learn how to make the kinds of small movements that you'll need when you begin to sew. After I've shown you how to make lacing cards, I'll also show you how to turn those lacing cards into crafts like bookmarks, cards, and ornaments. So, let's get started. Here are the supplies you'll need to make your own lacing cards. First, you'll need a sturdy material to make your card out of, like thin cardboard packaging, a craft foam sheet, cardstock, or a paper plate. Next, you'll need something to lace through your card, such as a shoelace. This hard cap at the end makes it easier to lace. You could also use yarn, and to make it easier to lace, you can use masking tape, a large blunt needle, or you can make a needle out of a pipe cleaner. Finally, you'll also need some scissors. If you want a shaped card, you may want something to trace and a pencil, and you'll also need tape and a hole punch. The first thing you'll need to do is prep your lacing card. Here's how to do it. Begin by drawing or tracing the shape you'd like your card to be. Then grab some scissors and cut out that shape. Next, grab your hole punch and punch a series of holes around the outside of your shape. These holes can be spaced far apart or they can be close together. Just make sure when you're punching these holes that you don't accidentally overlap them or have a hole that goes over the edge. Remember that you can use a pencil to mark where these holes should go. You can also vary how far from the edge your holes might be. So here I'm making some holes that are close to the edge and some that are farther away. Don't forget to erase any stray pencil marks. If you don't happen to have a hole punch at home, you can also make the holes using a nail and a hammer. Place your cardboard on a thick towel to protect your surface. Then place the point of the nail where you'd like your hole to be and begin to gently hammer. As you do, the nail will be pushed through the cardboard, leaving a small hole. If you'd like to make this hole a little bigger, you can gently push the nail through the hole. Next, let's talk about the string you'll be using to lace your card. If you're using a shoelace like this, you are all ready to start lacing but if you're planning to use yarn, you'll need to prepare it to make it a little bit easier to lace. Here are three ways to do that. One thing you could do is take a small piece of masking tape and wrap it around the end. This will make a hard cap that is similar to the cap on the end of a shoelace. Fun fact, did you know that this cap is actually called an aglet? Another option is to thread your yarn through a large blunt needle. I'm using a yarn needle here, but those big plastic needles also work really well with kids. Once the yarn is through the needle, I would actually recommend tying a knot to hold the yarn in place and make sure it doesn't slip out of the needle. 
And finally, a third option is to make your own needle using a pipe cleaner. Start by cutting a small piece of pipe cleaner, then bend the end to form a small loop and twist it in place to hold. This loop will now be the eye of the needle and you can thread your yarn through the eye. Once that's done, once again, go ahead and tie a knot in the yarn just to hold it in place and make sure it doesn't slip. To begin lacing, place your yarn behind your card, then bring it up through one of the holes. Pull it through until you have a small tail of yarn remaining. Make sure this tail is on the back side of your card. Now grab a small piece of tape and tape this tail of yarn to the back of your card. This is a good time to practice some basic stitches. I'll start off by showing you how to do a running stitch. To do a running stitch, take the end of your yarn and push it down through the next hole. Now pull the yarn all the way through and you should now have your first stitch. Now push your yarn up through the next hole, pull the yarn through, then bring it down through the hole next to that. This is how you do a running stitch and make sure you repeat the process all the way around your card. Up, down, up, down until you reach the end. Then take another small piece of tape, trim the extra yarn and tape it to the back of your card. And that's how you make a running stitch. Next, here's how to do a back stitch. To make a back stitch, begin by bringing your yarn down through the next hole, then pull it tight to make your first stitch, then bring it up through the hole after that. This time, instead of going down through the next hole, I'm going to go down through the last hole. Then pull your yarn tight and you have your next stitch. This time I'm going to go up through the next hole and pull my yarn tight, then down through the last hole right here and pull that tight. And I'm going to repeat this process all the way around my card, remembering to always bring my yarn down through the last hole and up through the next hole. When you've reached the end, you can once again trim the extra and put a small piece of tape to hold everything in place. And that's how you make a back stitch. And finally, here's how to do a whip stitch. To begin our whip stitch, we're actually going to go up through our next hole instead of down. When we pull our yarn tight, you'll see it makes a coil around our cardboard. Now we're going to do the same thing with our next hole. Bring it up through that hole, pull it tight, then up through the next hole and pull that tight as well. And you'll see we'll get a series of coils around the outside edge. Repeat this process all the way around your card. When you reach the end, trim the extra and tape it to the back side of the card. And that's how you make a whip stitch. Of course, you can also use your lacing cards to make fun patterns like this. This snowflake design was made by lacing the yarn through the holes in a specific pattern. To start my snowflake, I brought my yarn down through a hole directly opposite my first. Pull the yarn tight and you can see we now have a line. 
Now I'm going to make a small arrow at the end of this line. So I'm going up through one of the holes and down through another in order to create one side of my arrow. Then I'm going to repeat doing the same thing on the other side. Remember to pull your yarn nice and tight to complete the stitches. We're essentially using the yarn to draw the lines we need to complete our snowflake pattern. And I'm simply going to repeat these stitches all the way around my snowflake in order to make the pattern that I would like. This type of patterned lacing card where you have more choice in the order in which you make your stitches is actually really good sewing practice because it teaches you how to plan ahead and problem solve. Finish the project off by trimming the extra yarn and taping it in place and there you have your finished snowflake. Curious how to turn your lacing cards into crafts? Well, here are three crafts I made with my lacing card. I turned my heart-shaped lacing card into a Valentine's Day card by adding a message to the front. My snowflake lacing card became an ornament by adding a loop of yarn through one of the holes. and I turned my rectangular lacing card into a bookmark by adding a tassel. To find out how to make your own tassel, check out our bookmark at home makerspace video, linked in the description. We hope you enjoyed learning how to make lacing cards and some lacing card crafts. If you do make a lacing card, we'd love to see it. So please take a picture and share it with us at the library. You can do so through our Facebook at www.facebook.com slash FHCPL. Through our Instagram, our handle is at FHCPL, or you can send us an email. Our email address is makerspace at finleylibrary.org. Remember, our lacing card video was the first in our Learning to Sew series, so be sure to check back for more sewing projects. See you then! Bye!